Welcome to another video. We're going to try to solve this ceiling equation. I had made an attempt at solving this problem before. Unfortunately, even though I got the answer correct, my process was incorrect. I made a claim and I decided to prove it, but in my proof there were flaws in it. So, both the claim and the proof were incorrect, so I had to take the video down. So today I just got back from church and I said, I'm going to think through this problem again and find the easiest way to understand it. And now I think this one is correct. I don't need to prove anything. I just need to show you how to do it. Let's get into the video. There's a major concept that is attached to this problem and it has to do with the ceiling and the floor and the number. So let's quickly look at that. If you pick any number, every number has a floor and every number has a ceiling. Now let's talk about the special case. When a number is an integer, say it is one, it is two, it is three, any integer is both is its own ceiling and its own floor. So if a number is, for example, one, the floor of one, so we have one, two, three, the floor of one is one. So if we write the floor of one, so let's say it's x. When x gets to one, the floor is one at that point. And what is its ceiling? If you write this, the ceiling of x at when x equals one is also one. So all integers have no gap between themselves and their ceiling or their floor. Remember that. Okay, now, if a number is not an integer, it means there is a gap between the number and its ceiling. So always look at it this way. This is a room. There is a number here sitting, and this is the ceiling. So depending on what portion, what fraction this is, so let's say this is 3.4. So 3.4 will be somewhere here. 3.4 as you can see. So there is a gap of 0 0.6 between the ceiling and the number. But if this number grows and becomes 4, then 4 no longer has anything between it and its ceiling because 4 becomes its own ceiling. And if the number is 3, 3 is its own ceiling. So if you look at this problem here, we're told that the ceiling of this function is this function which simply means the gap between the number inside the room and its ceiling must be either zero or something that is less than one. Just as I've explained, the gap between a number and its ceiling is either there is no gap or it is some number that is less than one. It cannot be one. And that's what we're gonna use in this problem. So, we're gonna say that the number inside the house, the difference between the ceiling, so usually if you wanna find this gap, you subtract the number from the ceiling, that's how you get the gap. We know that the gap between the two of them, so we know that x squared plus x plus one minus x squared minus x plus one is less than one, and it could be zero. It would be zero if this number is an integer. Definitely, the gap, remember, the gap between a number and its ceiling is zero if the number itself is an integer. That's it. And this is all we need to solve, and it gives us the key to all the answers. Let's do it. Let's simplify the middle. Say the middle is going to be 0 is less than or equal to x squared plus x plus 1 minus x squared plus x minus 1 is less than 1. And what do we have here? We have um, this will cancel this. Let's use a different color. 
So we know that this x squared will take this x squared out. And we have this plus 1 is going to take this minus 1 out. So what we have left is 0 is less than or equal to 2x and it's less than 1. We can divide every part by 2. We have 0 over 2 is less than or equal to 2x over 2 and it's less than 1 over 2. So we say that 0 is less than or equal to x and x is less than 1 half. This is a key um, um, information that we just obtained. So whatever our x is for this equation, x is between 0 and 1 half, but it can be 0, but it cannot be 1 half. Okay, so that gives us two cases. x must be a non-negative number, that is, it is either equal to 0 or it is greater than 0, but it is bounded on top here by 1 half. So let's go check what's going to happen if x is equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, then if we plug in 0 here, this is going to be 0, 0, this is going to be 1. The, okay, so we only have 1 left. So the ceiling of 1 has to be equal to the right-hand side, which would be 0, 0, 1. So the ceiling of 1 is 1. Like we said, the ceiling of an integer is itself because there's no gap between it and its ceiling. Okay, now the second part. We want to go look for values of x that are not zero, that are less than one half, that will satisfy this condition. So we want to find values of x, all x, such that all x um, on the interval zero to one half. Okay, so we're looking for every value of x between zero and one half. We cannot include zero, we can include one half because we already um, tested that, but we're gonna go back to that conclusion. So, we'll wanna look for all values of x such that this, remember, this has to always be an integer because it is the ceiling of another number. The ceiling of any number must be an integer. So we want this answer to be an integer. So we want x squared plus x plus 1 is an integer. Okay, we can easily excuse this guy because we know it's an integer. So it means if we want this to be an integer, that is x squared plus x must be an integer. x squared plus x must be an integer. So let's go back to the original situation. We know that 0, in, in this case, is less than x. And x is less than 1 half. If I square x, it means the square of x must be less than the square of 1 half. Okay? So, just watch. I'm going to now square this, and I'm going to square this, and I'm going to square this. Now, because x is a positive number, I don't need to worry about the signs. Okay, nothing changes. Okay, so I have 0 is less than x squared, and x squared is less than 1 over 4. Now, but what I need really is x squared plus x. So, I'm going to try to add x to this. Well, because x is a positive number, remember, it is greater than 0, 0 will still be less than it, right? So 0 is still less than any positive number. But this number will be less than 1 fourth. Remember, x is less than 1 half, right, from the beginning. So we can go here and add 1 half to the right. So adding x here, well, We'll just say we add one half to that. We're trying to make this big, okay, as much as possible. So see what's going on. We can see that zero is less than x squared plus x. So x squared plus x is going to be a positive number, but it's going to be less than three-fourths. So we do not get the privilege of getting x squared plus x being an integer because the biggest integer that we, the biggest number we can get from x squared plus x is still less than 3 over 4. So x squared plus x cannot be an integer, which implies x squared plus x plus 1 is not an integer. So 
if we come back here, if x cannot be any other number other than zero, then x is equal to zero is the only solution. x equals zero. Thus, again, <laughs> x equals zero is the only real, let's put it that way, solution. And then we can quickly check that formally and just put it here in a box of x squared minus x plus one is gonna be zero squared plus zero plus one, oh sorry, minus zero plus one. The ceiling rather will be equal to zero squared plus zero plus one. And this is one, so we know that the ceiling of one is equal to one, which is true. So x equals zero is the only solution and this was the key to our path. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.